following an arbitrary clue in the form of a painting of a murdered teen, Houston cold case detective Joe Wills journeys to Atlanta to meet the blind artist who claims to know nothing about the deceased victim. The investigation drives Wills deeper into a web of intrigue, where he encounters a suspect who seeks infamy of a different sort. As he closes in on the desperate person of interest, he realizes the murdersome menace has flipped the script and set his sights on him. Now, for the veteran cop who'll go down to the blood and dust to nab an elusive killer, one thing is certain. The stronger will survive. Will he be the one to persevere? Blindsided is a standalone novel that captures the haunting inspirations of a mind's eye, forever challenging the notion of the common criminal. Buy your copy now on Amazon.com or on your Kindle devices. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the podcast. We have good friend and brother Joe Williams, one of our many team members we always allude to, who's been gracious enough to join us on the podcast. Today, I want you to stick with us the whole way through. We're going to be promoting a book he and his writing partner, Leslie, also known as J.L. Hilliam, uh, have written that I've actually read myself. It actually is a really good page turner, and it is called, as you can see, Blindsided. So this is the cover of said book, which Joe will talk about. We'll talk a little bit about the book and how they came to, to write it and what the impetus was. And then Joe has been gracious enough to give us some geopolitical and financial knowledge that, as you're going to see, is contributing to the tenor of the information that we share amongst our other team members. So as always, if you're new to the show, please do like, subscribe, and share so we can get this knowledge out and hit that customization button. Big Joe, how are you doing this morning, brother? I'm blessed, man. Blessed. I told you, any day that uh, I'm able to wake up and see is a good day. That's, you know, with all the events happening that you know behind the scenes, that is definitely a fact on many levels, personally and professionally. So, you know, people come to know you for the geopolitical side of things, but you read, you wrote this book that you were gracious enough to send to me, and I read it a little over a month ago, and I have to say, it, it literally is a page turner in every sense of the word. So, how did you come to write this book? What was the impetus, and how long did it take? Well, with you being a writer, you, you understand me when I say this. Sometimes you get ideas at some of the craziest times, or, or you're here afraid. Or you'll see something and bam, it it it, it create it, it starts the creative juices. Well, I was asleep one day on the sofa and Oprah comes on, right? And she's actually interviewing a lady named uh Lisa Fittipaldi. Now, if you know her, and I I, I really recommend that people look her up as Lisa Fittipaldi. Uh, when you look her up, you'll see that she's a blind artist. She she went blind later in life, but she's a blind artist. And Oprah was interviewing her. And of course, the writing uh, juices start taking off. I'm like, man, she's a blind. So, but what if she can paint murder scenes? Then I said, hold up. What if she can paint murder scenes as they occur? And bam, that's how Blindsided uh, took off. And the funny thing about that is um, at the time when I started writing that or th with the concept, uh, my sergeant, when I was a police officer, right, this is early in my career. It was back in 2001. My sergeant, who, who is an actor, uh, he said, hey, you know what? Leslie is a writer, too. She's been writing for, for years. So why don't y'all hook up? So we hooked up and we took both of our ideas, combined it, and we created Blindsided. Now, Blindsided started off as a screenplay, a movie screenplay, believe it or not. Uh, we submitted it, uh, won like third place in a Hollywood screenwriting competition, uh, fifth in San Francisco. Um, we went to a couple of pitch markets. We actually had uh, Revelation Entertainment. Now, if, you, if you're familiar with the entertainment industry, Revelation Entertainment is Morgan Freeman's company. Mm. Uh, they actually... Uh, uh, Mike Gossard is his name. He ran us down at lunch during a pitch fest that we were at. And he he found us, he tracked us down, found us, and he wanted to shop the script around. And unfortunately, no one uh, bit. He was holding on to it. Uh, he ended up losing his job with uh, Revelation Entertainment, but he kept us and wanted to sign us 
And, you know, everything just fell apart, but we uh, held on to it and decided to turn it into a book. And that's what you, you read, the read, you read the, uh, the book version of the screenplay, uh, Blind Sighting. Cool. I'm just, I muted so I could listen to you. You know, I don't interrupt right. my guests, you're, especially mm -hmm. you. So I'm going to say this now and I want you to add to it, Joe, because you know, I'm, I'm already hearing people cringe. Oprah's evil. She's dead. Oh, no. <laughs> That's not what you're saying, right? So can you just add some geopolitical into that? Uh, to what, which part? Oprah. You said you were oh, watching. Oh my God. I, <laughs> you know what? It's funny because this is before I discovered, you know, her background or what she was doing. So this was in 2001. So if you go back to 2001, you know, Oprah was huge. She was, she was on her way up during that time. Um, I believe right after that, she created the school in Haiti and, and all that. This is before a lot of the dark secrets start coming out. So uh, I'm not saying I'm an Oprah fan, which I'm not, but at the time I was actually watching the news and I, I fell asleep on the couch and Oprah came on. Right. And it was, I, I have a couple of my shows just from leaving the TV on and sleeping on the sofa or, uh, you know, just taking a nap. And, but no, I'm not an Oprah fan at all by, by any means. No. Well, I, I know that I'm just doing that for posterity because I can already hear the audience kind of, I just want to, yeah. oh, you know, yeah. I, mean, I thoroughly like to cut off the past. So oh, back yeah. to the, back to the book. So Leslie is your writing partner. How long have you guys been writing and how did you guys decide, um, who is going to write what, you know, percentage of what, how did you divvy that up? Well, Leslie is, is a way better writer than I am. I'm, I'm good, but she's well beyond me. And, um, uh, we, we both will hash out everything, everything we, we discuss almost like you, cause me, me, me and you, we damn near finish each other's sentences most of the time, especially in interviews and everything. But same thing with her, because we're, we are like sister and brother because, we pray together, especially when we go to these pitch festivals, which we no longer do. And that's a long story of why we don't do it. But, uh, uh, you, you know, dealing with stealing ideas and all that other stuff. And you know about that, being a musician. And uh, we actually, in 2001, she's, she was on the police department a, lo a little bit longer than me. I think she did like over 30 years. I only did 25 and a half. And she did over 30 years. Um but yeah, she's a lot better writer than I am. And uh, she became the primary writer. And then she, she'll write something, she'll send it to me. I'll brush it up or feel like, you know, if it's going the right way. And I have more st street slang and, and, you know, a little more relaxed conversation than she does. And she'll, she'll uh, send something to me. I'll look at it. We'll both talk about it. We always we always end our conversation, telephone conversation, by working out whatever question we have, and that's the way we. It, and it works perfectly. It works beautifully, to be honest with you. Yeah. So it's a nice symbiotic relationship. Oh yeah. 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 Now the question I'm sure everybody's thinking, or most people, without giving it obviously the way the ending. What is the book about? What's the premise of it? What makes it so meaty and interesting? Well, it's it's. Plainly about uh, a blind artist that actually has the ability to paint murder scenes as they occur. Now, each time a victim is killed, this guy paints a murder scene. He paints the actual murder scene. And uh, without giving out too much of the information, so, that, you know, uh, I don't want people <laughs> to read the book. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, a, blind, a blind artist who uh, lost his sight a little bit after birth and he has this innate uh, ability to paint these murder scenes vividly paint these murder scenes as they occur i mean that alone should tell you that yeah he's gonna be the prime suspect but i'm not gonna tell you much more <laughs> would you say would you in in thinking about it, as i'm going back and remembering details of the book would it be would it be fair to characterize this this the main character the older gentleman was somewhat prophetic uh, yes and no. Yes and no. Yes, but based primarily yes. If that didn't confuse the audience, did? <laughs> well, no. I'm just it's it's just an interesting thought that came to my mind now. Is like I didn't really think about it when I read the book because I was engrossed in the details. But now that you said it, just kind of triggered a thought. So okay, and um, are you planning a sequel to this book? 
Uh, not not this one. We actually have one we're working on right now that has at least two sequels to it. Um, and I expect people to look out for that one. Uh, Visions in Vidalia is the name of it. It started off as a Malediction, but mm -hmm. uh, the the title that we're going to roll with is Visions in Vidalia. So I'll I, I'll tell you that one, but I won't. Uh, I can't tell you too much about that one. Sure. Uh, Visions in Vidalia. And, and uh, a fun fact about that one, when we named our town Vidalia, we spelled it differently than the actual Vidalia in Louisiana. We actually did not know that there was a town called Vidalia in Louisiana when we wrote it. And we, when we found out, we, we uh, that I say next month, once we found out that there was a Vidalia, which was spelled differently than the way we spell it, we flew to Vidalia that following month and just took a tour of it just to see. And this is how you know God meant for you to do something because everything we wrote in this, that was a screenplay as well, but everything we wrote in that screenplay pretty much was vividly there. Everything was there. The location of it and everything was almost spot on, which was really scary because that script there is kind of a haunting script. You think, you think blindsided is deep. <laughs> Malediction is just as deep. Sure. Thank you. And last question on this for now is why should people read this book? What's so compelling about it? It's a fun book. It's actually an easy read. And uh, that's what we wanted. We, we didn't want a difficult read. You know how some people try to sound professional, you know, using big words. And a lot of times that that slows a lot of people down when they have to look up a certain word or something like that. So we tried to make it as easy as possible and we wanted to make it as much of a turn, a page turner as possible. And uh, uh, so it's a, it's something just to get away from the, the political atmosphere. It's a police drama. Of course, coming from two cops, it would be a police drama, but uh, yeah, everything we've written has something to do with some type of uh, investigation. Yeah, so it's true to life for you because it's based on your background. Your heart was in it, so that's right. and it's right. about writing about something you knew or no. But yeah, yeah, and 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 none of the stuff in the in in that book is actually true, um, as far as the police side of it. Uh, you know, I didn't take a case and put it in there, which I did take a case and turn it into a script, which is uh, caught in the game. It's an urban script that I wrote, um, and that one's about. Uh, what Caught in the Game is about uh, a teenage uh, athletic standout who gets caught in the game of life and same time playing sports. And so he has to choose between uh, game of life or life in the game, one or the two. Sure. That's, but see, that's a different, that's a different book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you for that. Uh, so, folks, I asked you to stay to the end on this, even if it doesn't feel directly relevant to you. It's about to be. So uh, Joe provides us a lot of the geopolitical and even some of the financial spinoff information that we share with you, just so you know. Because some of you are like, well, who is this team and what do they look like? He's one of many, but here's a face that you can see you've seen before. And as he was loyal as a police officer and military guy, he uh, has been loyal in this movement. So, Joe, I'll turn it over to you what... Uh, what geopolitical or financial information would you like to share today? Trump says he hates Taylor Swift. <laughs> and now you know the, the the connection with that, right? I wish I had uh, the video. I do. I do. I'm just listening. He, uh, he talks about how she's going to fail. And hopefully, and he said, you, you'll see her fail as, uh, financially as well. Right. But, we know that that actually correlates with something uh, that we're dealing with right now. And I'm going to ask you a question, John. What is the financial system called that we use and that we're using Swift, right now? The SWIFT system. The SWIFT financial system, right? Mm -hmm. And Trump says he hates Taylor Swift. He Really, he's talking about the SWIFT financial system. Right. So I believe that uh, the financial SWIFT and the SWIFT financial system is on its way out. I believe they're getting ready to do away with it. Agreed. And also that she lost almost, I think, 18 or 20 million followers on Instagram yesterday after that came out. He's also uh -huh. alluding to, Joe, just to add to what you're saying, he's also alluding to the financial corporations she's involved in because a lot of them deal with drugs yeah. and sex trafficking and pedophilia. Yeah, exactly. And now it's not really what she's involved, it's what 
the people who run her. And, right. Uh, right. She has the handlers. And uh, uh, when it switches over to the QFS system, the SWIFT is probably some elements of the SWIFT are still going to remain, but they're going to switch over to QFS system, which is the reason why it hadn't happened yet, because there's too much money to be made in that SWIFT system. The illegal money that's being uh, exchanged in that SWIFT financial system. For example, I was just telling uh, Amina uh, about, uh, what's that, uh, 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 Wells Fargo, not Wells Fargo, I'm sorry. Uh, what's the currency exchange company? I'm, I'm, I'm drawing a blank right now. Uh, uh, which one? I'm not sure. There's Western so many Union. of them. Western Union. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, Western Union, they turn over like 100 mil a year just in uh, currency transactions. Mm. They don't want the QFS system to kick in because that's going to do away with them. Because we will, we will be able to exchange currency just from uh, a telephone number. We'd be able yeah. to send money. Peer back. to peer. Right, right, exactly. But um, also, another thing with, with Taylor, if I'm correct, I'm not sure, I didn't verify this, but she had to cancel at least three of her concert events because she didn't even sell out. She didn't, she didn't come close to selling out those concert uh, yeah. things. And they canceled because of that, because of that endorsement. And they didn't realize how many conservatives liked her music. So, to your point, Joe, do you know how her career got started? No, I don't. No, that I don't know about. Well, a gentleman who I'm a friend with in Nashville, Phil Sweetland, really good guy, phenomenal piano player as well. If he's watching, Phil, get, hit me up if you, you see this by chance, or I'll do it when I see you there in Tennessee later this year. Uh, he is very connected. So, when I got out here years ago in LA, he helped connect me to a lot of people because, as you know, Right. especially in the music industry, whether you're in New York, LA, you know, Boston, Tennessee, everything's interconnected in some kind of way, right? It's a very tight knit community. And the reason I say that is because when he connected me here, he, he told me that the Swift family, it, her father owns Swift trucking. You've probably seen those on the roads. Yes. Yeah. I, I think he put somewhere between 5 million. I don't know the exact number, but I think it was like around 5 million into her career. He pumped money to get her started. And that was right. over 20 years ago. So five million then is like, you know, twenty-five million today. More than enough to most artists need about a million dollars to really get off the ground. So that was, um, uh, you know, more than enough to to get her hydrated and, and moving forward. So just a little interesting aside. Wow, this is a small world. That's the only thing I could say is a small world, especially in, especially in that industry. Yeah. Um, so, Joe, I'm going to show this for the posterity of time for you in the audience, because I sent this to you earlier today, folks. Some of you asked me about how, you know, the documents to prove that uh, the Internal Revenue Service is not only the IRS. I've shown you from the Internal Revenue Service. I've shown you from the federal tax court recently on a show I did with Dave Champion. And then as part of this closure journey in my life, like like you, Joe, is we're all circumventing to the end of this journey together uh this document came yesterday to my my house and i saw it come in the U usps digest so i was anticipating it this is the somebody asked me about this saying that they're having trouble defeating the franchise tax board so what we have to understand folks is at least in california don't do it but if you own a business you have to unwind the federal uh and if you deal with the tax court which i did and the um state you have to unwind in this instance all three so the state wants their pound of flesh in this case 10 pounds of flesh with this crazy state so i got this document yesterday joe i'm going to share with you in the audience today let me know when you can see this yeah i'll remove this over so that we can all see it together are you seeing are you seeing it yeah i see it i see it okay i'll blow up as much as i can now what I, i'm going to move my cursor over here joe to the top where the logo says right franchise tax board now what you guys have, folks have to understand is when I first got this document early in January of this year, it said IRS slash FTV. So right off the bat, they changed their language. Now, no longer does it say Internal Revenue Service, it just says Franchise Tax Board, which is the state's way of trying to get their pound of flesh. You can see the date they sent it. And obviously, I just told you I got it yesterday. Okay, here's the account number, tax year. Notice what they say here. Based on the information you provided in your protest, I didn't know I was doing a protest, Joe. It's, it's not like I was. <laughs> it's not like I was showing up at a building saying, "Hell no, we won't go." You know, yeah, right. wasn't doing any of that. So that's funny. The curious language that they use. We canceled yeah. it. Yeah. You are not required to take any further action. Proposed amount zero. 
So well, you know they have to put that word protest in there uh, because of with them being in you know that cabal system. Correct. Not saying challenging or right. anything like that because right. if you were challenging it, they know that this would be a court situation and you could probably file some papers on them or you, you get what I'm saying? Uh -huh. be, you know, being in the position that you're in, it, uh, yeah, they have to word it properly. Right. I just, I, um, it's just, it's just a point that this, this language matters and that right. they would use such a strong word like that. And this is basically their way, way of conceding without conceding. So the whole right. point of it is folks that, the old guard is done and it's unwinding, as Joe said, we're moving out of the quote swift system, which is an oxymoron because it's anything but. I mean, instead of you depositing a check on your phone and waiting two days for it to process or a day, when when the new system kicks in, it'll be seconds, if that. It could be within a, a microsecond. Now, right. the, the other thing we did get today, which is interesting, Joe, is that uh, the XRP case, well, I should say the SEC pending appeal on XRP. The back wall for that we just found out today, folks, is October 7th. My strong suspicion is they're going to solve this before that point. We have a rate cut tomorrow. I don't know if you saw in my telegram, Joe, but Elizabeth Warren, Queen Fullable from my embarrassing former home state of Massachusetts, has said that she's requesting a rate cut of 75 basis points. I still think they're going to go with 50, but if yeah, they do 75, or they do it in November, that is definitely a death nail to the old system, correct? Yeah, well, they can't do 75 because no. if they do 75, it's going to crash things instantly. Uh, and I agree with you. I believe it'll be somewhere around 50, if not less than that, uh, probably well, like 20, 25, 30, somewhere around there yeah. uh, because they can't do it right now. They can't show their hand. They, well, they don't want to do it until after they determine who's going to be the president. Here's my theory on that, Joe. I, I, John Neagle, Currency365, agrees with you. He says that they priced in a bit 25 basis points three weeks ago. However, <clears throat> there's something you have to, we all have to consider. We know they're fudging the numbers. You saw me on Bill Holter and Manorino, yeah. and all those guys are agreeing. They're, they're lying outright. Even John Williams' book on inflation shows that the real rate of unemployment is somewhere between actually 20 and 25%. 20, 25%, right. So... They're lying about unemployment. They're lying about job stimulus. They're lying about uh, the rate of inflation. Remember, folks, inflation is a tax. It's a right. death nail to the, an economic system. So right. when they do inflation, what they're doing is killing off the old financial system, which is on purpose. So because they're lying about the numbers, I think, Joe, they're not going to come out and admit that because they never do. So they're going to have to raise the interest rate, I believe, to 50 basis points to cover the lie because they got to divert people's attention. Either way, as you say it goes, they're going to have to do consistent rate cuts throughout the remainder of this year, which will certainly put a death nail. And when we bring my friend on next week who works for a big financial company that we can't mention, he's going to show actual data statistics and analytics from internally that prove that point specifically. No, well, I agree. I agree. But uh, the death nail, that's the reason why I don't believe they can go over 25%. I mean, 25 basis points. If they, if they do, it's over. It's over. It's, it's you know, this financial system is done. It's going to crash instantly. It's over either way this year. It's just a question of if it starts this month. I'm looking at historical replication, Joe, from 2008, because everybody remembers Lehman Brothers, you know, right. just crashed. People were committing suicide. What, what month did that happen? In? That happened September. In quarter, September. Right? It that happened September. Quarter, right? It was 18 yeah. years. Okay. It was 16, excuse me, 16 years to the day that I moved out here, almost precisely. Right. Days after I moved out here on September 4th or 5th of 08, I think it was September 10th or something like that, somewhere in that window, right around 9-11, no coincidence, that they, you know, they they got totally axed and you had the bailout and all that stuff. I think it was about a week later they did the interest rate. So it's almost 16 years to the date. And so I see, that's why I see that being the first, you know, or final death nail to the old system. It's funny that you bring up the 16 years because that's one of the things that they've been saying, especially on the news that uh, the uh, since for the past 16 years, Donald, Donald Trump has had for four, but no, nothing has changed in the other 12. And they keep bringing up that 16 years. I'm like, and you just brought it up. I'm like, okay, that makes a lot of sense. Cause 16 years ago, that's when it happened. Uh, Lehman Brothers crashed, uh, housing market crashed. I mean, a lot of stuff happened during that time. 
And that was right. 16 years ago. It's almost a delta, to be honest with you. So, yeah, I, I agreed. So last question for today, because I want to keep this brief for you and everybody else, keep it meaty. Now, it's a two, it's a two part, it's, it's one question with two parts. One, um, in your estimation of looking at the financial situation, we got BRICS, you know, coming up next month. We've talked about that ad nauseum. Is or is it not your contention that XRP is tied into that to help the the new financial system, you know, pay out all these currencies? And why are you so, in your opinion, high up on dinar and dong and zim and everything else that we talk about? Well, uh, dinar and dong to uh, get away from the the cryptocurrency because a lot of people are confused when it comes to cryptocurrency. So, and they don't, a lot of people don't know where to get it from, how to get it, how to, the value of it, how to maintain the value and all of that. But the Vietnamese dong, the Iraqi dinar and Zimbabwe currency, those are easily accessible just by going somewhere and, and purchasing it or exchanging for it. I don't want to say purchasing, but mm -hmm. you, you exchange for it. And, and shoebox investments are, are, is basically what it is. And it's easier to, it's easier to establish, uh, establish wealth, personal wealth, with uh, long-term wealth, long-term retirement. Uh, using that, uh, you want to get difficult with it. We are, we can start naming that four hundred one ks. How how they're crap, uh, CDs crap. Uh, you, you know what I'm saying? We can go right. It's all toxic with it. paper debt. Yes, exactly. And but that's all based on the old system. They put all the money into this, give it a nice title and tell you you need to invest in it, but then they tax the crap out of you because mm -hmm. my money is tied up into that. It's like I have to wait until I'm 65 to withdraw so much. If not, I get penalized. I get like 35% of my money that I've- That's you know, all going away. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, mm -hmm. but other than that, I, I, <sighs> CDs are coming up. Uh, I'm not sure if you listened to the video. Uh, I mean, the- um, what do you call that? That, that uh, Twitter X. thing that Trump was on yesterday? I did. Yeah. yeah, I listened to it yesterday and they were talking about cryptocurrencies and everything, which uh, a lot of those currency has something to do with the QFS system as well, mm -hmm. as far as the financial stuff. So um, as far as um, which currency to go to, uh, I can't recommend any cryptocurrency to go with. Uh, I have a few. You have a few. I still do a little bit. I dabble in it, but not enough to pass some information on. on it. Uh, I think you're, you're better on that end than I am. Sure. But, uh, uh, I will say this, though. Uh, things are happening. And I, I'm still big on the elections not being held. I'm still big on, if I can do my, uh, my Joe Biden, I don't know if the, we're going to have an election this year. I still think that the Trump card, which is, you know, under that Bronson case, somewhere around there, I was going to mm -hmm. say that. I still think that the military is going to announce the fact that the uh, that 2020 four year quarterly selection was fraudulent. Right. And that is where we're going to determine who the next uh, leader of the free world is going to be. And, and that's, that's just my opinion. That's just based on what I'm seeing. Sure. Once and that happens, then the financial market is going to set in place. But you also have to remember, the moment something like that is announced, they will crash the system. The, uh, and that's the, the evil, the deep state, the, the, the evil guys in there. Mm -hmm. Sorry, they will you. personally flip the table, you know, just tossing the game board all over and it will get bad. You think the him having another hit on his life, I believe, and this is what I was telling a friend of mine. I told him, I said, I think that there's going to be another attempt, but there this is. one is one going to be, this one is going to be a little, little more dangerous than the other ones. Because I believe it's going to be something bigger to where more people are going to get injured. And this is only my prediction. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but I, I'm just looking. And this is coming from the writer side of me, knowing that if I was writing this script, what would I do right now at this moment? At this moment, well, going into the climax, this is what I would do. That's why I'm so I'm I'm so enamored by, you know, the movie side of it. 
which is hard for us to separate ourselves from. We talk about that all the time, sure. separating ourselves from the movie. But I really feel like something bad is about to happen. I do. I really do. Because uh, Well, this is why we need to continue to pray and rebuke against that. We have that power in the kingdom of God right. to, to stand, and many Christians, and including yourself, and rebuke it. I, I was just doing that this morning. There will be one more attempt. There was slated to be three, and this will be the last and final one. I, I agree with you. I don't think there is going to be an election. I think they're going to turn the tables over with a cyber attack. You know, Trump is giving us solutions yesterday at the DeFi. He's decentralizing the old. He's telling you he's gotten rid of the central banking system ostensibly. He's talking to the public, right? right. right. And as far as XRP, that's definitely one we recommend. I think everybody knows that. Somebody asked me where you can get them. It's easy. You can get them on Uphold, the app. You can get them on Coinbase. You can also now get it on Robinhood as well. Yeah. And the more oh, places that you're you... Back? They're Sorry? Back? Robinhood? Because Robinhood uh, is now you. It's now accessible on Robinhood, yeah. Okay, okay. So that's okay. a big... They took a hit. Robinhood took a major hit. Uh, they did. But last year. Last year sometime. This is how they're compensating. But the point is, we knew that when they hit Robinhood, that was going to be a big sign, Joe, of when XRP was going to break out. Because once they... Once the SEC drops the case, mm -hmm. or the appeal, I should say, specifically, look for Gary Gensler to leave. He's not waiting until Trump gets back in. I can guarantee you that. He's going to exit stage left like all corrupt right. CEOs he's typically gone. do. He's going to step he's gone. Back. So he's, he's going to leave. You're probably going to see XRP drop to 45 cents, but then the next mark will be a dollar. And then after that, 15 to 30. Right. I'll give you guys right. a big hint. When it goes at that last rate, yeah. watch for the reset of Iraq. Right, right. Okay. All right. People are listening and they know, they know, they know. So okay. Joe, um, thanks for your time as always, brother. We'll be talking later. Um, for the book right. itself, where, where can people buy it? And what are last words you have to say to the audience today? Uh, the book is uh, available on amazon.com. Um, here it is right here. And like I said, it's a nice, it's, it's a page turner. It's a beautiful book as well too. Uh, and we're proud of it. We're proud of it. Um, we're also equally proud of the, the next ones, the next, uh, we're going to keep JL Hilliam going for a little while. Um, that's the author name It's actually a combination of both of our names. And we want to keep it like that because whenever we work, work together, it'll be JL Hilliam. But when we do it, our separate things, we're going to, I'll be under my name and she's going to be under her name, uh, um, for our separate projects. But JL Hilliam is, uh, uh, it's, it's blowing up. It's blowing up. As a matter of fact, we actually have some people looking at the book right now. So cool. uh, it's a 20 year old project that, like I said, started as a screenplay and ended up as a book. And all of our screenplays are we're actually converting them over into books. Cool. So I hope people can uh, buy them and enjoy them because they, they're uh, really good books and really good, easy read. And we love them. We're probably, as, as a matter of fact, I've actually read my own book twice. <laughs> well, I, uh, I certainly, I certainly enjoyed it. Um, the book, it unbiasedly, yes, he's my friend and my brother, of course, but it is actually legit as far as whatever my word carries for you. I don't know, but in my opinion, it was a good book. It was a good read. It was engaging. Like he said, there's some, there's some, you know, hundred dollar words in there occasionally just to, you know, keep yeah, it right. but, right. but it's not, it's not, it's not like you have to pull a thesaurus every other minute. It's not like a, now, all due respect, like a Victor Davis Hanson book, pseudo intellectual, right. where you have to constantly pull over the side of the proverbial vocabulary word, word right. um, road and try to figure out what he's saying. Um, it's clear, it's it's entertaining, it's engaging, a range of emotions too. I, you know, you get you find yourself getting kind of immersed in the characters, and right. you did a good job with that, which I think any good writer needs to do. So what we'll do, folks, is we'll put that link. Joe will provide for us if you want to go get his book on Amazon. We'll put that link in the right. description. As always, if you are looking to get currencies or add to the cache of what you already have with all the different currencies, yes, including the Boulevard, we'll leave that link in the description where it says more. Just click on, click on that and you get all the links accordingly. Joe Williams, thanks for joining us, brother. We appreciate it and we look forward to talking with you soon. All right, JD. I'll talk to you later, man. God bless.